we are in John Frankenheimer's Seconds, a neglected Hollywood masterpiece from 1966, from the very heart of the hippie era, which preached unrestrained hedonism. Realize your dreams, enjoy life fully. The film is the story of a late middle-aged businessman leading a gray, totally alienated life. And then he decides at some point that he has enough of it. Through one of his friends, he contacts a mysterious agency which offers him a deal. They will reorganize his life so that he will be reborn. The cost runs in the neighborhood of $30,000. I know this seems rather high, but in addition to the rather extensive cosmetic renovation by way of plastic surgery for you, CPS has to provide a fresh corpse that perfectly matches uh, your physical dimensions and medical specifications. CPS? Oh, cadaver procurement section. They use some corpse. They change it to look like his own body. They plant this corpse, stage a pseudo-accident, so that police thinks he is dead. You know, Mr. Wilson, you represent something of a milestone around here. And then the agency organizes an alternate life. In a nice villa somewhere around L.A., they even organize a nice lady who conveniently stumbles upon him when he is taking a walk along the beach. Hello. He is thus reborn, I'm Norma. no longer as a boring businessman, but as a modernist I'm painter. Tony Wilson. Called Tony Wilson, played by none other than Rock okay. Hudson. Sure. So the woman, Nora, his new love, tries to engage him in life, even takes him to some uh, wine orgy where people get drunk, dance, naked, and so on. Everything seems okay. Yes, yes, yes. But Tony Wilson starts to miss his old life. More and more, he is haunted by his past. Finally, he breaks down, approaches again the agency, telling them that he wants to return to his old life. The boss of this mysterious company, a kind of kindly, cruel... Hello, son. ...superego paternal figure, tells him the truth. He disappointed them by not being able to adapt himself to his new life, Ah, uh, you know, I sure hoped you'd make it. Find your dream come true. What? I said I sure hoped that you'd make it. Find your dream come true. <laughs> oh, you can call it wishful thinking, son, but life is built on wishes. And you gotta just keep plugging away at them. You can't give up. And we can't let the mistakes jeopardize the dream. So what went wrong here? The problem was that his past in its material existence was erased. Well, here's your transportation. What? Surgery, sir. He lived in a totally new environs, new job, uh, uh, new friends, and so on. What remained the same were his dreams. Because when the company organized his rebirth, when the company provided new existence for him, they simply followed his dreams. His dreams were wrong dreams. And this is quite a deep lesson for the theory of ideology. Just remember, son, we got to keep plugging away at the dream. The mistakes teach us how. It wasn't wasted. Remember that. On the way to the operation hall, he discovers the horrible truth. He will not be reborn, but he will be used as a cadaver for another person who wants to be reborn. We should draw a line of distinction within the very field of our dreams. So keep it until life eternal. Between those who are the right dreams 
pointing towards a dimension effectively beyond our existing society and the wrong dreams. The dreams which are just an idealized, consumerist reflection, mirror image of our society. We are not simply submitted to our dreams. They just come from some unfathomable depth.